if any of these resonate with you, then you're watching the right video. Sarah, I'm barbell back squatting at the gym, but I'm not making any booty gains or I'm not able to add any weight to the barbell. Progress has stalled or I have back pain and or knee pain when I squat or my squats are crooked or I can't squat below parallel. My mobility sucks. Hi, I'm Sarah, creator of the Strength Academy, and my passion is helping people overcome muscle imbalances that are causing pain, mobility restrictions, and stalled progress. I teach people how to overcome compensation patterns so they can move better and excel in life and sport. Back in 2016, I was squatting my brains out, but my efforts at a physique transformation were failing. I wasn't able to add weight to the barbell, nor was I able to squat below parallel. Squatting caused excruciating back and knee pain for me, and my squats were visibly crooked from a mile away. Why was this happening, you ask? Well, because I was squatting with compensation patterns. I wasn't engaging the correct muscles. Why? because I had muscle imbalances. The way I was squatting was not training function. On the contrary, it was training dysfunction. Yep, good job, Sarah. I was feeding my problems. I actually ended up strengthening my compensation patterns by continuing to squat incorrectly. And I had no idea I was messing myself up because I had no movement IQ. Good news, this is all fixable. How? by increasing your movement IQ and by building new movement patterns. That sounds fancy, but don't worry, I've got your back. In this video, I'm gonna go over what not to do, what to do instead, and I'm going to show you two exercises that you can add to your regimen that will help you overcome squat compensation patterns. What's the point? Why should you even care? Because if you squat using the correct muscles, you will stop having pain and you will experience booty gains and strength gains. I know how overwhelming this can feel, but I'm proof this is fixable. All it takes is a desire to consistently show up to fix the imbalances and create better movement patterns. If I sound like Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, 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 then do me a favor and listen right now. Are you listening? Because this is the most important concept. It's not what you do, but rather, how you do it. So just because you're barbell back squatting at the gym, it doesn't mean you're going to get results. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry can barbell back squat, but the question is, how are the squats being done? Before I dive into the barbell back squat, I want to make it super clear that this is an advanced exercise. Barbell back squats are a specialty skill. This is a complicated movement pattern, just like how handstands and barbell snatching are complicated movement patterns and specialty skills. And that's why it baffles me why it's assumed that everybody should be doing barbell back squats in the gym. I'd like to make it clear that not everyone should be doing barbell back squats at the gym. If your body lacks the muscle structure, stability, and mobility to do them, then you're going to train dysfunction and eventually you will break. So if you really want to do barbell back squats, I'll show you two exercises in this video that will help you get started on your journey of building structure, stability, and mobility. I'd also like to make it clear that I have removed barbell back squats from my training regimen years ago. And I'll explain why at the end of this video. Note that for the squats in this video, I'm not talking about an aggressive one rep max or Anderson squats where you are in external torque when squatting above parallel. Rather, I'm talking about squats where you do consecutive reps in a flow state using the internal torque chain. And I'll get into torque later in this video. As you may or may not know, I'm a certified strong fit coach and these are principles that I apply to my teachings and my training. So my pelvis and my rib cage are stacked over top of each other. Now I've lost the stack. Stacked, not stacked. So when I lose the stack, my ribs flare and my pelvis tilts anteriorly. 
You can see I dump into my low spine. Analogy for you, using scissors. When I'm properly stacked, the scissors are closed. When I lose the stack, whoa, I scissor open. Oh, stacked. Ah, stacked. So you don't want to scissor open. You want to close your scissors. Let's take a look at the barbell back squat. So here I'm stacked. That's great. Oh, I lost my stack. I scissored opened. And oh my goodness, I'm squatting without being stacked, which means I'm painfully dumping into my low back. Plus, I'm wearing a waist trainer. That has to go, and I'm going to talk about the consequences of the waist trainer later on in the video. In this video, you can see that I'm stacked, and I maintain the stacking of the ribcage and pelvis throughout the entire range. Note my control in the bottom position. I can really tap into my glutes that way. Now, what if you don't have as much mobility? Then you're just going to squat to your current level of mobility. You'll notice there are both sandbags and barbells in this video. So how does your implement affect your ability to recruit the correct torque chain? So when squatting, should you use a barbell or a sandbag? Now, if you have muscle imbalances, then definitely use a sandbag. Why? Well, barbells don't promote natural movement patterns because the shape of the barbell distributes weight on the outside of the body. And this facilitates opening of the scissors. It's an external torque pattern. Sandbags, however, promote more natural movement patterns. And that's because the weight is distributed between your hands. And that's going to facilitate internal torque, TDA engagement, and correct stacking of the rib cage over the pelvis. A barbell, however, is going to pull you into external torque. So if your internal torque chain is non-existent, which it often is in most people, then the barbell will encourage you to scissor open, which is going to also cause you to dump painfully into your low back. So that's why barbell squats are not a good idea if you already compensate with external torque during these movements. So the beauty of the sandbag is that it will actually help you learn how to use your TVA, inner hamstrings, inner quads, and gluteal max muscles when you squat down and up. There are three other reasons why I prefer sandbags. Now, most lifting in real life is done with objects between your hands. For example, picking up your baby or your cat. And this makes sandbags obviously more functional than barbells. Barbell movements require more skill to learn. So for example, trying to learn how to do a barbell clean and jerk can take years. Whereas sandbag movements are much easier to learn because there's a lot less skill required. In fact, I learned how to do a sandbag clean and jerk in a few minutes. So this makes sandbags very user-friendly for beginners. And number three, the asymmetrical, unpredictable loading of a sandbag makes for better core training. Sandbag training will fill voids in your training, which means it'll help fill in the cracks in your foundation, which will help you minimize injury and improve your gains. We need two ingredients for a proper movement. Do you know what they are? Have you ever actually even thought about it? Okay, number one, mobility. And this is the ability to generate tension throughout the full range of motion throughout the entire squat. Hold on, there's a cat coming through. Excuse me, excuse you. Number two, breathing. In this case, we are nasal breathing to better connect us to our core, our TVA, and to help us maintain intensity and in flow. Whatever you do, do not bear down. This creates downward pressure on your pelvic floor. What is bearing down? Well, bearing down means you are increasing the pressure in your abdomen by contracting the abdominal muscles and holding your breath. This can happen when you're pushing out a baby or straining to push out a bowel movement. This is the Valsalva maneuver. And this actually causes an undesirable downward pressure on your pelvic floor and a lot of pressure in your abdominal cavity. So this can lead to hernias and pelvic organ prolapse. So how do you know if you're bearing down? Well, if you have urinary incontinence when you do heavy deadlifts or squats, that's a red flag that you're bearing down. Or if you have a habit of holding your breath and making a grimacing straining face when you're doing strenuous exercise or lifting heavy things, that's a red flag that you're bearing down. 
Now let's talk about waist trainers. I realize these are ubiquitous like crabgrass. I want you to ditch the waist trainer because this causes downward pressure on the pelvic floor, which contributes to urinary incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse. In other words, like your vagina will fall out of you. And since I'm talking about waist trainers, let's also talk about weightlifting belts. These aren't supposed to be substitutes for a weak TVA. They will only encourage your TVA to stay on vacation in Mexico. And you need your TVA to be strong because it's your body's primary stabilizer. It has to stabilize your spine every time you move. And that's hella important. So your TVA should be your weight belt and waist trainer. I threw my weight belt in the trash once my TVA stopped snoozing on the job. Now check out Tyler from my strength academy. He can deadlift over 400 pounds without a weight belt. You know why? Because this strong TVA is his weight belt. My other advice, which I realize isn't always feasible, is to take off your shoes. Barefoot is ideal, and I know not all gyms will allow that. But by being barefoot, you will be able to use your foot proprioception to guide you. So as promised, I'm going to show you two different exercises that can help you fix compensation patterns with squatting. Now, I want you to realize these are just two exercises. Obviously, this is a non-exhaustive list. And if you want more, I invite you to join my Strength Academy, and I will help you overcome compensation patterns and develop one hell of a strong TVA. Exercise one, the sandbag squat. I suggest learning with a lighter weight. I'm using a 60 pound sandbag in these examples. You could also use a medicine ball or even a bag of kitty litter if you don't have access to a sandbag. If you're interested in a sandbag, you can get them at strongfitequipment.com. I am not sponsored, I just like these sandbags. First, you need to lap the sandbag. Deadlift it to your lap, then clasp one hand around the other wrist and stand up. Film yourself from all angles, the side view, the back view, and the front view. Otherwise, you're not going to pick up on imbalances. And I'm going to teach you what to look for. So for the squat, I want you to adopt the stance position that feels comfortable for you. Get into a nice rhythm, a flow state, and maintain your pace. Nasal breathing is paramount. So you're going to nasal inhale as you descend into the squat, and then nasal exhale as you stand back up. As soon as you can no longer maintain this breathing pattern, you're done. Drop the sandbag. Otherwise, you're going to default to the wrong torque. You're going to start mouth breathing, and that's not the intent here. The intent is to maintain TVA engagement the entire time. So you're going to isometrically hold the contraction of your TVA, just like what you do when you're holding a plank for 30 seconds. You will internally torque as you descend, which means you're using your glute max muscles, your inner hamstrings, your inner quads, and your TVA. And then you're going to use these exact same muscles to stand back up again. Don't cut your squats short. Complete your squat at the top by going into full hip extension. Don't arch your back or lean back at the top. If you can go below parallel, then by all means do it, but only if you can maintain tension in your TVA, glute max, and inner hamstrings and inner quads. This is important. So how do you know how deep to squat? So your true mobility is revealed to you by your breathing. So in other words, breath equals your mobility. So when you can no longer inhale through your nose as you're descending, that's when you stop moving. So you're going to coordinate your movement with your breathing. So that might mean you might only be squatting to parallel and that's acceptable. I'd rather you squat to parallel using the correct muscles than try to be a hero and go deeper using the incorrect muscles. Using incorrect muscles will not fix your imbalances. It will feed them. Watch me do it in the video. I am breathing really loudly on purpose so that you can hear my inhalation. And when I stop inhaling is when I stop descending. And then you hear me exhale on the way back up.
Video yourself from the side view to make sure you're not diving forward with the knees. If you are, that's a sign that you're quad dominant. So no wonder you're not building your glutes and your squats. So your goal is to start using your glutes, your posterior chain, instead of compensating so much with your quads. And this is important because if you are using your quads all the time like that, it's going to put you at risk for knee pain. What you can try doing is playing with your stance. Widen your stance and really shoot your butt back as if there's a chair that's a bit too far behind you and you're trying to sit on it. Concentrate on feeling your glute max muscles and inner hamstrings as you squat. And if you're still veering forward, then actually use a chair behind you and lightly tap your bottom on it. Over time, as your posterior chain gets stronger, you're going to be able to narrow your stance and squat a bit deeper. The key point is that you must never, ever initiate your squat with your knees. Always initiate your squat with your hips by shooting your bottom back and down. Don't lose engagement of your core just to get ass to grass. That's how you end up butt winking. And don't ricochet out of the hole. You want to be able to control the entire range of motion. You probably noticed that I'm not wearing shoes, and this helps me to concentrate on using my medial plantar fat pad for proprioception when I squat back up. So that's the area just below your big toe knuckle. And this helps me get in touch with my inner hamstrings and glute max as I'm squatting back up. So I mentioned it's not what you do, but rather how you do it. So let's analyze a few different ways to approach the squat. For an internal torque squat, we're going to be using the inner quads, inner hamstrings, gluteal max, and TDA. Here's how it looks. As I squat, you can see I'm maintaining tension in these internal torque chain muscles. So does that mean you can't squat using your outer quads, outer hamstrings, and gluteal med muscles? That's not true. It's not what you do, but rather how you do it. So let's examine this. As I squat down, you can see I'm maintaining tension in the external torque chain muscles. Take a look at the difference between the internal torque squat and the external torque squat. Now here's where this gets interesting. You'll notice I only squatted to parallel with the external torque squat, whereas with the internal one, I went ass to grass. What's up with that? You cannot do external torque below parallel. Well, you can, but you'll jack yourself up. This is the way the body works. As soon as you squat below parallel, it's internal torque. As soon as you get back to parallel, then you can switch to external torque. So now let's take a look. I'm squatting down with external torque to parallel. Then once I get below parallel, it's internal torque. Then as I get back up to parallel, I switch back to external torque. Complicated, eh? So if you can't squat below parallel, it's a sign that you're lacking the internal torque chain muscles. You can't generate tension in these muscles in that particular range of motion. So it's just a case of building structure and stability and then earning that mobility. Ask me how the fuck I know. It's about finding balance. So if you have always been using your external torque chain to squat for your whole life, then you're going to have an imbalance. You probably have no internal torque chain. And that's typically how most of us present, which is why I'm teaching you how to focus on finding your internal torque chain. But you shouldn't do internal torque chain squats exclusively for the rest of your life either, because now you're going to develop an imbalance because you're not doing external torque. Now you're just swinging wildly from one extreme to the other. So it's about finding that balance where you're able to train both. So at this time you might realize, whoa, I have no internal torque chain. So you need to go to town on that to help fix that imbalance. And then once you fix that imbalance, you need to make sure that you're not creating a new imbalance. Make sure that both the internal and external torque chain muscles get trained. You, know, you can't just train your inner hamstrings. You also have to train your outer hamstrings common sense but perhaps you never really thought about it before now you're thinking about it so do you have to break up with barbell back squats no you don't if it feels good to you then do them but if you're doing them with your scissors opened and you have pain then you need an intervention otherwise you're going to break and if you can build the structure in your internal torque chain, then you will be able to return to doing barbell back squats because you'll be strong enough to stop the barbell from scissoring you open. But if you don't have the internal torque chain, then it's gonna be really easy for you to scissor open. 
Sarah, is it better to do more reps and to add more weight? Okay, listen to me because this is super important. More is not better. Better is better. So you're going to have to tell your ego to take a cigarette break. So that way you can actually listen to the feedback that your body is giving you. Your body will let you know if something doesn't feel good or safe. And in that case, you need to back off. Because if you don't back off, you're just going to start training dysfunction. So why did I break up with barbell back squats? Because it just doesn't resonate with my body. There are some exercises out there that just don't feel good in my body. And so I don't do it. On an interesting note, barbell front squats feel fantastic for me, but I still don't do them either. Why? Well, because I've got other fish to fry. I just honestly don't have time to do everything. I'm busy doing hand balancing, back bending, pole dancing, sandbag training, pull up training, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If I were doing all of these things, I literally would be training like eight hours a day. It's just not possible to do everything and you have to do you. And I know there's this gym myth that the only way you're going to get booty gains is if you're doing squats and hip thrusts. Newsflash, I don't do either of those exercises and check out my ass. There's more than one way to build a booty. The bottom line is if you're able to engage the muscle through range of motion, you're going to develop the muscle. It wasn't until I transformed my movement patterns and stopped moving with compensation patterns that my body finally transformed. And I'm very well known for saying this statement. If you want a physique transformation, you first have to transform your deleterious movement patterns. I have seen this happen with many of my Strength Academy members. Take a look at Julie, Kim, Andrea, and me. You can see there's quite a change in the physique and there was no change in diet. It was simply a change in movement patterns. If you move with correct movement patterns, with correct engagement, you will make gains. So you don't have to do the in vogue exercise to get the gains. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. L prep slides is one of the best ways to discover the feeling of the TVA engaging. It is one of the best ways to build TVA strength. And I love this exercise because the mere act of pulling the hips back helps you actually find the feeling of the TVA engaging and it lets you strengthen your TVA. It will feel like pure hell if you do it right. And that's a win. It's not about how perfectly it looks. It's about finding the feeling. Now, when first starting out, use yoga blocks. And as you gain proficiency, you can ditch the blocks and do it with your hands on the floor. The blocks are easier because you have height. So the longer the arm, the more power you have pushing into the ground. Use glide discs or socks on the floor. So push your hands into the yoga blocks to create leverage and lift your hips back. Try pulling the hips back as much as you possibly can. If you feel pure hell in your deep core, that's your TVA engaging. Congratulations. Then slide back and forth for 10 reps. Your feet stay on the floor. They just slide back and forth. Now focus on pushing down into the yoga blocks and finding your TVA. Whatever you do, do not hold your breath. Do calm nasal breathing. Nasal exhale as you pull the hips back. That'll help you engage your TVA. Then nasal inhale as you slide back out. So the most important thing is that you are engaging your core when you nasal exhale. You should feel your pelvic floor move upwards and your TVA cinch in. And also make sure you're not cutting your exhalations short. Fully exhale. So I recommend you do the L-sit prep two different ways with the back and forth repetitions about 10 times and also just holding it for 10 to 15 seconds with your hips back as much as possible. This will teach you the feeling of your TVA engaging and it will also strengthen the hell out of your TVA. And doing this exercise once in the blue moon isn't going to help you. If you need accountability to tackle this very seriously, then I suggest you join my Strength Academy program especially if constant pain and stiffness keep you from fully enjoying life, it doesn't have to be this way. 
So if you've been sitting on the fence about joining my Strength Academy membership, now is your chance. Today, November 27th, 2023, there is an exclusive Cyber Monday offer, and this sale is going to end Monday at midnight. Just use code FLASHBF20 for 20% off the monthly, semi-annual, or annual recurring Strength Academy fees. You heard right, the recurring fees. For more information on the Strength Academy and what it offers, you can look in the caption below and click the link provided. I have a really exciting announcement to share with you. Such a major milestone in my journey with you, and that's the launch of my revamped website, drsarahsolomon.com. This is my old website that I've had for six years, and it was time for a change. You know, my website, my movement patterns, my mindset, even my products have undergone a transformational journey. And I'm over the moon to reveal this final piece of the puzzle, the all new look of my online home. So why the change you ask? Well, growth and evolution are essential, and it's high time that my digital space reflected the person I am today. So I cannot wait for you to check it out. Simply click the link in the caption below and go see it for yourself. Your thoughts and feedback mean so much to me, so please do share your thoughts in the comments below. But that's not all. I have a special free gift for you. So if you have back pain, definitely check out my brand new free emergency back pain recovery kit. This kit is epic. It's got strategies for fast pain relief. There are easy to follow video routines that you do with me and so much more. Just check it out. You can click the link in the caption below and claim your free kit and unlock a world of relief. Your back will thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this incredible journey with me. Your support means the world to me, and I appreciate each and every one of you who has subscribed, liked, and commented. Your engagement and feedback inspire me every day. And I want you to know that your comments don't just make my day. They shape the content that we create together. This is a collaborative effort, and I'm grateful to have such an amazing community here on YouTube. Your voice matters, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.